From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss the impact of volume versus quality in marketing. Joining us is David Finkelstein, who is the co-founder and CEO of BDEX, which aims to revolutionize the way companies connect with their consumers through real-time data insights. Yesterday, David and I talked about the impression volume versus data quality issue, and today we're going to continue the conversation talking about what podcasters can learn from bloggers. All right, here's the second part of my conversation with David Finkelstein, the co-founder and CEO of BDEX. David, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Thanks, Ben. Happy to be here. Good, good. Excited to have you back for another Data Tech episode on our show. Yesterday, we talked about the problem of buying media where people are incented, media buyers are incentivized to buy volume and hope that they hit consumers as opposed to focus on quality. It turns out this is a misaligned incentive problems, and it it happens in my industry. So I want to get your take here. Here's something that I've seen in the podcast industry, and I think about where we are in the growth of podcasting. We are in our, let's say, middle school years where we're gaining some traction. The industry is growing. It's getting the attention of media buyers, becoming more commonplace in the way that blogging was in, I don't know, the late 90s, early 2000s. Everybody has a website, but not everybody had a blog. The leading marketers had a blog and were figuring out content marketing in the early 2000s. And it seems like the same thing is happening in podcasting. The best brands are figuring out that they need an audio solution and that they can publish themselves through podcasting. But the problem is that people are also using podcast advertising, whether they're creating their own content or not, and they're focused on buying downloads. A download is essentially akin to a blog impression. So if we think about what's happened in media buying in the last 20 years, as we've focused on going from impressions to figuring out what actually converts and being able to track to that, what do you think podcasters can take away from the evolution of blogging over the last 20 years? We've been blogging for many years. You know, we just started our own podcasts a little over a year ago. So Mazel tov. <laughs> Yeah. So it's interesting when you talk about this. For one, I think that the podcasters have learned from bloggers that content is king. That's what it came down to. I mean, people created blogs because they found that more content meant more visibility. That's what's going on with podcasts now. We're able to produce audio content that is perpetual. It's there. Once it's out in the open web, it's there and it can be seen over or heard over and over again. That's an important lesson. I think that more content is opportunity when it comes to whether it's blogs or podcasts. But I think that also when you're talking about from an advertising perspective, there's challenges with podcasts, right? I mean, like you said, how do you judge the number of podcast listeners from a download? Do you know if that download was actually listened to? And I think that some of those challenges are that it's often hard to tell. So it comes down to the conversation with advertisers. What are their goals? And trying to sort of mitigate their understanding of the difference between advertising through a visual media versus an audio media. It's the biggest problem that I think podcasters are facing. And I'll be the first one to say, I think downloads are a terrible metric. Download is getting a file onto a device. You don't know whose device it is. You don't know whether that content has been engaged with, the rate of engagement, and each different platform because it is a distributed medium, right? You upload your content and it gets fed Spotify. 
who's got their own version of what a listener is, as opposed to Apple, which is different. And then there's the thousand other podcasters. And the lowest common denominator is a download is a download is a download on every single one of these apps. But everybody's counting the downstream metrics of listens, unique users, engaged listeners, people maybe that took a call to action. Like there is no uniformity in those downstream metrics. So I feel like this was something that bloggers were faced with early. Hey, I can drive 10 million impressions to my blog, so you should pay a... $25 to $50 CPM for access to that audience, right? That was something that happened in the early days, and it was about just capturing as many eyeballs as you can. What were the ways that in blogging over the last 20 years, the industry has gone from tonnage more towards conversions and understanding what is a real person really consuming real content? Yeah, it's a lot easier in blogging because through the web browser itself, you're able to track a lot of that, especially historically. I mean, obviously, it's getting more difficult to track that with the changes in regulation. So there's more challenges that will going to come with respect to that. Even in ours, like we do a, a video version of our podcast and we actually put up a QR code when we talk about our product. We put up a QR code and use that as sort of a mechanism for someone to be able to convert. And if somebody goes to that QR code, loads that up, I can actually see that they've gone to our website from our podcast. And I think that maybe that's one of the challenges in the podcast industry going forward when it's an audio podcast like this, as opposed to ours, which is a video podcast. It's the challenge of can the podcasting applications build in capabilities for tracking? I think that would be really interesting. I mean, what if you're on listening to a podcast and talking about an advertiser and there were some way that you could click and visit that advertiser and and measure that click through? No, there are solutions. Uh, It used to be called pod sites. Now I believe it's just Spotify ads or Spotify advertising. There's other third party tracking tools that ingest the data from your podcast. The only thing we get is an IP address, and it tries to do some sort of data validation and then gives a pixel onto a website to tell whether that person exposed to an ad, the person that downloaded the content, continues onto a website or completes an action on that website. David, you're the data guy. I've got a list of IP addresses from my podcast, and I want to tell how many of those people either visited a website or engaged with my content. Isn't there a way to take that data and enrich it to understand who had what interaction wherever they went, if it's a property that I own? One of the interesting things, so if it's property you own and you wanted to sort of validate that against conversions, people that registered on your site, we absolutely can do that. So for example, you get a list of IPs of someone that listened to the podcast. Then you have sort of this transaction data on your website of people that maybe registered on your website or created some transaction on your website. And you can actually, if you were to convert that into some information, let's say their name and email or something like that, because they did some conversion, in theory, we could take that original IP list, compare it to that conversion list and see if they match. They're not always going to match on the IP because someone might be out running, right? When they're listening to the podcast and then they may be back in their home when they actually visited the website. So unfortunately, IP addresses might not match up. But regardless of that, if we're able to track back to that consumer, then there is a way to actually backtrack that into some conversion data if you have the first party data that you were able to collect about when they registered on your site or something. So, and this is kind of akin to what used to be pod sites is doing is essentially building that through a pixel that you integrate onto your website, but you can do it manually. I think the other thing to think about when we're looking at podcasting is... It's not just necessarily the volume of downloads, it's the quality of the audience. What are some ways that podcasters can do a better job understanding the type of people who is actually listening? What data is available if you have this underlying list of IP, that's the data that we get as podcasters. How do you figure out the quality of the audience? Yeah, the IP data alone is definitely going to be a challenge to do that. First party data will always work best there. So it's always best to try to find a way to engage with the consumer directly and get some information from them. If you have some way via your website associated with the podcast to be able to have them sign up for a newsletter or sign up for some communication, that gives you the best opportunity to learn about that audience. Using that first party data 
we're at BDEX, we're a big proponent of first party data. We're always talking to brands to collect as much first party data as possible, build a relationship with your customer. And even if you need to find some way to provide some value exchange in order to get that information from your customer, that first party data, it's super valuable and worthwhile to do that because it's always much easier to learn about your customers through that first party data than it is to take some list of IP addresses or something like that and try to understand who those people are. So why is it more difficult when you have an IP address? If you have the ability at BDEX to be able to map an IP address to a hashed email, or I guess in theory, an unhashed email, although you wouldn't be passing PII back to clients, why can't you do things like, all right, I can get from IP address to hashed email address, which means I can figure out who you are, which means I could figure out who you are on LinkedIn, which means I can aggregate the audience data. It seems like technically that would be possible. What, where does it break down in reality? It breaks down at the IP address for two reasons. One, the IP address must be a household IP address for you to really understand anything about that consumer. If it's a mobile IP address and some network or their office, you're going to see too many people associated with that IP address, so you're never really going to be able to resolve it to a person. The second challenge is, even if it is a household IP address, you're now limited to how to connect that with the actual consumer in that household. So often I can say, okay, well, I can recognize that that's an IP address that's related to a household, but guess what? I see that there's four people in that household and I have eight email addresses associated with those four people. So I don't necessarily know the exact person that was listening to the podcast. I can give you an idea. I've narrowed it down from 300 million to four, but it's four people that I can narrow it down to. So we don't really know the exact person that it was. Yeah. And those four people could be, well, one of them's the CMO of Salesforce. One of them's a stay-at-home mom. One of them is in first grade and one of them's in preschool. Well, who is your target audience? That could be a whole bunch of different people in this case. Yeah. So now you have to break down each of those individuals and try to obtain some third-party data about those individuals to identify if it's the right person that you're trying to reach. The evolution of podcasting as a data set is slow. And we've been focused on the IP address. It's really the only data that we have available to us. And it's incredibly limiting. Now, sure, you could probably triangulate to whether someone who downloaded a piece of content or an IP address coming from an IP address ended up visiting a website. But understanding who's in your audience just based on the IP turns out to be incredibly difficult. A problem that never existed in the blogosphere. So maybe podcasting still has some room for improvement. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with David Finkelstein, the co-founder and CEO of BDEX. If you'd like to hear more from David, you could find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter. His handle is BDEX underscore David. That's B-D-E-X underscore D-A-V-I-D. Or you could visit his company's website, which is BDEX.com, B-D-E-X.com. If you want to hear more from David, you could also check out his new podcast, which is called Deconstructing Data, wherever you listen to your podcast. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com, where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter, and you can even apply to be the next guest speaker on the Martech Podcast. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is MartechPod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly. My handle on LinkedIn is Ben J. Shap, P-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app, and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.